This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In this video, we wanted to test out a project idea, which not only is something that could be done at home, but also showcases how awesome recycled plastic can look with just a little bit of love. So we thought we'd try our hand at picture frames. For the colour mix, we decided to go with a combination of blue and white, which we conveniently had plenty of already shredded. And since it's all shredded, it needs far less direct heat to get it all melted, so we loaded it all up into our baking tray and popped it in the oven. And no, this is not the same oven we use for cooking any food. We got this from a charity shop for a tenner, and we use this only for plastics. While that melted, we added in some of these faucet bottles. These are white with a thin layer of black plastic in the middle, which give a really nice contrasty marbled effect. We chucked these into our panini presses, which we got for just £3 from a charity shop. The plastic on these is a little bit thicker than the milk bottle tops we normally melt, so it does take a little bit longer to melt. To keep things nice and easy, we just kept on layering them up before doing any twisting and folding. We combined the two lumps of white plastic into a single mass and then left these in one of the presses to continue melting. Then we took out the blue and white melt from the oven and popped it into the other press to get it up to temperature nice and quickly. Although the panini presses hold a smaller quantity of plastic compared to the oven, the direct heat contact from the two plates mean that the plastic actually heats a lot quicker, which is why it's our preferred method, even though it takes a bit more effort. Once this was a little more workable, we folded it into itself a bunch of times just to really try and incorporate that white into the blue to achieve maximum marbling. Lastly, we combine the two separate slabs of plastic together, and we like to wait until this point to mix them, as it means we get a little bit more control over how marbled the plastic comes out. It helps having two of us here, because we really like to go to town on that plastic, giving it plenty of twists and folds. Once it was back up to heat, we popped it in our bottle jack press to make a 300 by 300 mil slab. If you haven't got one of these, don't worry, you should be able to achieve something similar with a whole bunch of clamps. So after a few hours of cooling under pressure, this is how the slab came out. And this is where you can really appreciate the effort you put in to all that twisting and folding earlier on. To tidy this up, we took off any high points with a mallet and a sharp chisel. We then squared it up on our table saw. This isn't something that we always do, but as it's for a frame, we wanted to make sure we were working with something nice and square. We 
round the slab through our Triton thicknesser, and this takes a thin layer off the top surface with each pass you take to give a beautiful finish, and we did this on both sides. This does create a load of waste, so you only use it for projects when it's important that the end result is super flat. But as always, the wonderful thing with this material is that you can collect up all of that waste and melt it back down again for a future project. Lovely! Next, we trim this down to the final size of our photo frame, and we wanted this to hold a standard 10 by 8 photo. Of course, remembering to save all those scraps. We then marked out the 10 by 8 space in the middle, which left us with a 34 mm wide frame. First we drilled a small hole, and then we took it over to our scroll saw to cut out. We do like using the scroll saw here, because its thin blade does create far less waste compared to other tools. Saying that, if you don't have a scroll saw, you could achieve something very similar with a jigsaw or even a coping saw. To tidy this up, we once again busted out our sharp chisel to take this down to the exact line that we marked out before. We also used a card scraper on the outside surface, which is perfect for taking off a really fine layer and leaving a really lovely finish. To hold the picture in place, we routed a groove around the inside face of the frame. This will allow for a photo to be held in position once the backing has been attached. Again, this is another tool that can kick out a load of waste, so we're always really careful to collect all of that up to use in a future project. If you saw our last video, you may remember that we had some leftover bright pink plastic from when we made our bowls. So we threw this in our t-shirt press, which gave us a nice big sheet that was only a few mil thick and perfect to act as a backing for our frame. It was just a case of trimming this down so that it fits snugly into that groove we created in the frame. This is thin enough that a sharp knife will do the trick perfectly. We then pin this in place with a couple of small nails, and these can easily be bent back whenever you want to swap the photo out. If you're not able to make super thin sheets, then a good alternative would be to upcycle an old or a cheap secondhand frame from a charity shop, and then use the back part of that. That way you could just make that front section of the frame out of recycled plastic to fit that backing. You'd also have the right size glass for the front ready to go. In our case, we're not using a glass front, partly because we didn't think it was needed, but also because it makes it very tricky to film with all the reflections. The final stage of this was to add the hanging mechanism. To be fair, mechanism is probably a bit of an exaggeration. All we did was chuck in a couple of short nails and then span a piece of picture wire between them. Simple, but it does the job. So before we show you how the whole thing looks now that it's finished, we wanted to take a second to tell you about the wonderful sponsor of this video, Skillshare. We've been using Skillshare for over a year now, and it's become our go-to place for whenever we're trying to learn something new. This is largely because it's carefully curated, which means you're not spending loads of time wading through content which is not particularly useful. All of the courses are expertly hand-picked, which means you're always watching the top quality information on that subject. A main area that we've needed to skill up has been around video editing and content creation. So we've watched videos on lighting setups, editing in Adobe, and how to speak confidently on camera. But as well as YouTube, we also produce a lot of content to go on our Instagram page. To try and level up our Instagram content, we recently started a course called Video for Instagram – Tell an Engaging Story in Less Than a Minute by Helise Navarez. It covers everything from where you can find inspiration through to different visuals.
visual techniques that you can use. After watching it, we're inspired to go through our backlog of YouTube videos and cut these down into one minute edits for Instagram, which we're currently working through. So if there's a new skill that you've been wanting to try out, or if you're looking to brush up on an existing hobby, then Skillshare is the perfect place to help you learn. If you're interested, then the first 1,000 of you legends to use the link in the description or code brothers make will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. A really big thank you to Skillshare for continuing to sponsor our videos. Let's go see how that frame's looking. Well, there you go, a set of three frames made out of a single sheet of recycled plastic. It's a super efficient project material-wise as you're able to tessellate the frames inside each other so you're only losing a really small amount of material. Out of the 300 by 300 millimeter sheet that we made, we managed to make a standard 10 by 8 and a 6 by 4 photo frame, as well as a tiny little one from the middle as well. And whether you're just trying to remember one of your favorite memories, your idol, or just a couple of legends, these frames are a fun intro into making recycled plastic projects or even as a gift for someone else. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you do have a go at this yourself, be sure to send us a picture because we love seeing how you guys take on our projects. And as always, a very special thank you goes out to our wonderfully, amazingly perfect patrons. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.